You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and thank you so much for spending a few minutes of your day with us. As always, we really appreciate it. We do, and I've got some news for you. Some of you have called in and said, hey, hey, you said something last week, and I just wanted to correct you. Or, hey, hey, I need more information on this. So, got a couple updates for you. Uh, Today, number one, I got an email back. I didn't actually get an email back from John. I just looked on his website. But uh, (laughs) Koa's... It's kind of like getting an email back. Yeah. Uh, Koa's only last two years. So when you do apply for your 107 test uh, and you take that test, and the next thing that we've told everyone in our drone you community is, hey, you've got to start figuring out what airports and airspace you're going to fly in or you want to fly in so that you can apply for open COAs for those areas. And I said, you know, I would be applying for airports, everything in 500 miles. I don't know if I'm going to go quite 500 miles. How many airports would that be? I think that we underestimate. I would underestimate how many airports that would be. Well, I think towered airports and untowered airports. If it was untowered airports, it'd probably be like three or four dozen, if maybe more. In a 500-mile radius? Yeah, hmm. 50 airports maybe. Okay. But uh, I would say unta- or towered airports, maybe like five or six. Oh, that's not many then. No. That's no. doable. No. So uh, it's something we've been talking about. Also, I w- if you have been applying for your 107 test, you've gone on the CATS website, you've done the pre-registration, you've booked your test, great. For those people who, who I told, go to your local office that you know is a CAT center that you know for a fact is going to allow you to take the test, that still works. So if you call Rob, the local center, and you say, hey, I just want to make sure I've got a spot for sure on the 29th of August to take this UAS exam, and they're, they're going to say, okay, we got you down. But the feds, the CAT centers are going to say, well, well, wait a minute, you're not in our system yet. Right. There is a degree of separation between the local office and the federal system. Which is to be expected this early in the process. I mean, it'd be nice if that wasn't there, but it's not unexpected. It's you just true. have to navigate understanding that. It's very true. So um, I made sure that when I went to the local area that I was actually scheduled and I figured it out through my actual registration with CATS. So I went through both sides to figure this out. Right. Um, and... Yes, the local place did book me. What they were going to do, though, is have me schedule through the CAT Center when I got there. Right. So you can save like 30 to 45 minutes of actually going to the CAT Center. If you sign up online, you pre-register, you pay the 150, and then they book you through the local office. Or you can go through the local office, make sure that you're getting a time slot, and then go through the federal system, pay for all that, take care of it. They will work with the local office in ensuring that your receipt matches mm-hmm. the time that you're actually taking the test to ensure you're, you're good. So question on that. You were on the phone with the FAA, and he kind of helped you connect the dots and make sure the two were starting to speak together, that being the test center and the FAA, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, do you have to call to accomplish that? No. Um, what happens normally is that you'll get a receipt. Um, they'll say... Uh, you know, you may get a phone call. I had to call just because I'm I'm anxious. I just wanted to call. Yeah, them. no, I get so it. They I'm gave just... me a phone number too, so they're like, you know, I don't even remember if it said you call or they call you. Um, but Leo did have my registration information okay. way back when uh, and called me. So before I called him, so it, I honestly don't know the answer to the question. But uh, yes, they did connect the two places together. The local I guess my question is, could you accomplish what you just did online? No. Okay. So I wish the phone no. call was necessary. The disconnect is that they you actually pay for the test and then you get on the phone with someone and they schedule your test. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So sorry to make that not clear, but hopefully it's clear. bottom line is it makes sense to contact the FAA first. Potentially. Yeah, go on the CATS website, register. Remember CATS is a little different from FAA. FAA uses CATS. True. Like an That's true. No, important distinction. Um and go online, uh, sign up for the CATS website. You'll get a registration uh, name and you'll make a password and everything and then actually pay the 150, register for the test, then the call happens and you schedule it. But what I'm saying is if you're smart, you schedule with your local place yeah. in the meantime because then you can kill two birds with one stone. Sure. Especially since lines are getting quite long. But yeah, so it's a little bit of an extra step 
to go that route, Mm -hmm. but you're saying it's worth it. Well, yes, because here's why. If I didn't do that, I would have had to wait another week to take the test and I wouldn't have been here. Yeah. So, I mean, they really are booking far in advance right Right. now. So if you haven't booked your 107 exam, book it now. I'm also very excited to tell you guys, since I saw you last, we've been kind of bulk scheduling podcasts because it's the summer and we all have a lot going on. Um, I did record with Ted Wilson our initial study material for the 107. I'm very excited about that. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of questions answered. John Rupert will be on later this week. I don't think you're going to actually hear from him until next week, but we're recording with him this week on the study questions. So expect a podcast going over some of the study questions. We'll also have a more in-depth version for our members. So if you are not a member of the Drone U community, highly recommend you become a part of it um, because you're going to have information that you won't have other places. And yeah, I, I will say one of the conversations I had with Ted Wilson was, you know, all about the test right? And how the test is scheduled, how you should study for that test and how you should take the test. Mm -hmm. And one thing he kept coming back to is, you know, Paul, this is why I tell people to just study the questions. Don't study the material, study the questions because you're going to be asked the questions in a very specific manner. Right. And if you don't know how to answer those questions in the manner in which they're seeking, you're going to miss that question and potentially fail the test. So when you say just study the questions, great advice from Ted Wilson. We were talking the other day about that's pretty much how you study for most tests, whether it be the CPA exam, whatever, mortgage people. Now the 107 is you study all the questions, you go through them multiple times and you learn the material that way. What questions are we specifically referring to? At this point, are we talking about the 40 to 80 that have come out from the FAA? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. So we're basically focusing on those when you say that. Well, and also we're putting together material here at DroneU where I'm taking all of the other FAA material that's out, the stuff that you can only access if you're a certified pilot, and I'm putting that into question form too. So So basically pulling out those pieces that we think will be pertinent as it relates to the test. Correct. Okay. Yep. Cool. So, and I'm I'm really excited about it. Also, the way that I like to study is I like to know the test questions, but I like to go a little deeper as well. I like to get into the material and really understand the different theories and the way that things are calculated that way. You know, I have a very good understanding of the material. Yeah. So for me, I'm going to have the questions, but also a drone you, if you're more of an in-depth studier, we're going to have everything broken down. We now know, thanks to the FAA, everything that's going to be on the test. So we know, we now know. Categorically mean, you mean, right? Well, I mean, down to the line item. I mean, it says on the sheet I sent you that the FAA sent us every single question that's on there. So we now know everything that's going to be on the test. So now we can have comprehensive training for you. So thank you for your patience. We really appreciate it. We want to do this right. Uh, A lot of people have been like, why aren't you putting study stuff out yet? And I'm like, look at all the stuff that's out there right now. It's crap. Mm -hmm. It's total crap. So we're taking our time because we want to make sure you have the right Yeah, and and one of the reasons that's our approach is because, yes, August 29th, people can start taking the test. But the reality is people are going to be taking the 107 test from that point forward for years to come, right? So we're not looking at it like a, a mad rush to get this done. We want to do it right. So there you go. Even though I'm kind of going for the mad rush to get the license. That's a different point. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Second person in line in New Mexico. I'm going to strangle the first. And we're still kind of upset that you're not first. (laughs) Drone you in our own state (laughs) supposed to be first. We're going to look into this. We're going to, we may have to make sure someone doesn't get to the testing center some one day. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) We're just, we're just flat tire. That's all we're talking about. Yay. Oh no, nothing bad. You know, no, no, of course I, not. no. A flat tire would be uh, would be good, but then you're causing damage to someone's car. So we don't want to do. We that. Don't, you well, can't what do are we that. Gonna do? We're gonna put a bear in someone's car. Well, it doesn't have to be damage if you just let the air out, Psh, Ooh, right? Okay. So you don't have to stab the tire. That's the way Paul <laughs> thinks. Wait a minute. Why are you talking about this? <laughs> Let's just wrap and get into today's question. I do want to say though, Rob. I was out on a job this last week, and there were a lot of instances where he had really early mornings and really late evenings and not a good chance to get some food. And that's when I started eating that charky jerky. It's lamb jerky. So healthy. It's healthy. It's gluten-free. It's paleo certified. Holy shamoli. Why wouldn't you eat the stuff? It actually tastes really good. So <laughs> they have, No, you've shared it, and it's very good. Yeah, they have a what? red chili flavor. I just got some for you. You haven't shared that with us. I, it's at my house. I was supposed to bring it here so I could show it to you guys. But guys, if you're out in the field and you need something that's safe, 
has no preservatives. It's nitrate free. It's good protein. I'm a big nitrate free person because yeah. that causes cancer. So it is rich in protein mm-hmm. at 11 grams or so per serving. And you know what? At the end of the day, it hits the spot. And yeah. That's what it's all about. So check out Charky. It's ranchlineallnatural.com. Check it out. I love eating this stuff when I'm out at work. You might too. Absolutely. Sounds like a great idea. So question. question. <laughs> Before we do that, we want to remind you, if you have a question, please go to askdroneu.com. It keeps this podcast going. We love getting your questions. Remember that if you have a question, so does somebody else. They're thinking the same thing. For whatever reason, they're not asking it, but you did, and that's cool. And then you get put into the drawing for a free drone you membership, which is roughly a five six hundred dollar value because that would be for one year. And we are on podcast three eighty seven, and we do this in fifty podcast increments. So question askers between three fifty one and four hundred will be entered into that drawing. We're getting close to that, and we'll give someone else a free membership. Awesome! All right, let's jump right in. Hello, drone you. Hello, Rob, and hello, Paul. My name is Nathan Alexander, and I'm calling from Seattle, Washington. I love flying. I've loved it all my life, and I've been flying quadcopters for the last two years. I'm about to get a drone. But you know what? I'm not too excited about filming or editing. Is there anything I can do that concentrates more on flying? I do get excited about working within the film industry, though, flying for TV shows and having my work show up in TV shows. But I don't want to film, and I don't want to edit. I'm not mad. I just really, really, really like flying, and I really, really like your podcast. It's helped me out a lot. So do you have any advice for me? I'm about to get a Phantom 4 or a Typhoon H or an Inspire. I don't know which one yet. I just really love flying. Thank you and good night. All right, so who was that? I don't know if that was Batman or... Or... I don't know. Just happy, angry dude? It just sounds like this. I didn't think about Batman until you mentioned that, but that's probably what he's going for. It would be like for. a Christian Bale Batman. Like, okay. Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank Just you for saying. the question and for putting a little spunk into it. We always appreciate that. Absolutely. More fun to listen to that way. Definitely. We should send him some swag. Yeah. We're really bad about actually sending the swag we out. We need to hire another intern. We need a swag sender outer. Our seriously. In, our intern needs to come back and send some swag. Totally. Anyways, Anyways, we'll figure that out. All right. He's got a good question. He wants to focus on flying. He doesn't want to edit. He doesn't want to produce videos. Um, there are a lot of guys who do do this, but I will say there's some there's a competitive advantage in knowing about editing because you know, you can take a shot one way, but if you learn how you can manipulate the shot, you can better educate a director or a producer on on taking that type of shot and what they can do with it. Because you're kind of seeing the back end while you're flying. Yeah, yes. Of course, he's saying he doesn't even want to film. I, yeah, so I'm wondering, like, you There's know... There's a little bit of a contradiction in that, I think, so right? So let's just, let's go with two different scenarios. Let's go, let's go with scenario one, and he just wants to fly, meaning he wants to fly a drone on a team and someone else operates the camera. All right. Okay. So that's actually an interesting perspective. And then let's take option two, where he doesn't really mean he wants to film to produce. He just wants to fly and capture stuff to give to someone else to do with. I actually thought of a third option. What's that? That's just FPV racing. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to film at all. Yeah. And you just love to fly. But you may lose your uh, manhood to a 14-year-old boy. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, do it for fun, <laughs> not for prizes. And I think you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, no, I'm that FPV racer, Luke, uh, Luke Ban- I think Bannister or Banny. The um, kid that won in Dubai? Is that what yeah, you're talking about? Yeah, uh-huh. That's why I'm saying, you know, like the one thing I love about being a drone pilot and, rec- and, you know, being a photographer and being a videographer is that your success is when your client's happy and you get more clients or you get more work. And in FPV, you know, you could get depressed real fast. Yeah, I mean, you're you're flying against digital natives, right? So they're yeah. essentially born with a controller in their hand. So it's just, yeah, yeah. not fair. Could you, I just got that image in my head. It was weird. Anyway, <laughs> um, so thinker. if he wants to focus on just flying and he doesn't want to do anything, meaning he doesn't even want to operate the camera either, 
I think the best thing for him to do is either work with an existing drone crew, apply for drone jobs, uh, like through Amazon. Amazon's hiring right now. Um, hmm. uh, I mean, really, you're going to have to work with a production crew. If you just want to fly and you don't want to film, you should be calling production houses and, and saying, hey, I'm a very good pilot. Uh, I'd like to show you how, like, you know, if I can benefit your services at all. I will say, though, it's going to take you longer to build up the volume of jobs to, mm. to make this successful for you. Um, there is, you know, there is added benefit, too, in, in learning how to edit because you're watching your footage, so you're going to be much more particular about learning the motions and the smoothness and whatnot. I mean, right. like, this last week I only flew for two hours, and I feel like I'm starting to lose some of the sense in my hands. Yeah. So I'm going to be flying more. So... It's when watching footage and, and, and I can see those small variations that you can't really see on your monitor or your iPad. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm, I'm still struggling with that, bridging that gap of I want to fly, I don't want to film, but I want to participate in the movies because that's what you're doing when you're participating yeah, you, in the movies, right? Yeah, Just normally filming. you're flying and filming when you're Well, flying. yeah. So you can also have visual observers, but normally you're flying and filming. Yeah. Um, Anyways. Anyway, that being said, if he wanted to go the second route where he's flying and filming, again, production houses, get together with your local uh, movie association or permitting office, make sure that people know your name. Um, If you're flying and filming, you're going to have a very, very difficult time getting work just as a pilot. You've either got to join another crew Find a production team who can operate a camera on a gimbal, is familiar with using like a Ronin or, uh, you know, one of the Alta gimbals or what are they called? The Sinistar gimbals. Mm-hmm. Um, so, there, you know, it's going to be harder for him to get work for just flying. Yeah. And maybe he finds a buddy or a partner or whatever who likes controlling the camera and they develop a, a relationship together and a rapport together and maybe they become sort of a package deal. Yeah. Do something like that. Yeah, and I will say it's good to join a team. Uh, this last week, I was doing a commercial for a huge shoe company, and we had a team of three, and it's just so helpful. Mm-hmm. It really is. You don't make as much money, but it's super helpful. So, yeah, it's probably safer. I mean, I think there are a lot of benefits to doing it that way. A lot safer, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I think we answered this question pretty much. I hope much. so. If not, let us know. Please let us know. You can comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash drone you. Just let us know which episode you're commenting on. Also, you can comment or subscribe to our YouTube page and watch these podcasts if you're just listening to them in your car on iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, I will say this. If you give us a review Uh and you give me a screenshot of the review, this is either on iTunes or on Stitcher, I will send you a care package of drone gifts with an S, plural. So I want everybody to notice that what he just said. He said, I will send you yeah, this is me. <laughs> Gosh, what did I just do to myself? I'm, I'm kidding. Anyways, I can send. We'll it. get that taken care of. So, what does that look like? Maybe a hat and a sticker or something. I've got so much DJI gear. Yeah. I could send you. Why do they send lanyards, so many lanyards? Hats, t-shirts, bags. I've got wristbands. I find the whole send a ton of lanyards thing kind of funny. Like, I don't know. People like lanyards. I don't know what it is. You don't see people walking around town wearing lanyards, though. Anyways, it's kind of funny. Last time I had a lanyard, it was on my keychain when I played lacrosse, just because I like to flip my keys around, and it drove my dad crazy. I bet it did. (laughs) So anyway, that was the last time I had a lanyard. Anyway, guys, if you do write that review and you send it in to us, I have a gift for you. Where can they send that? Support at thedroneu.com. Cool. And then, you, or and then I'll forward it to Paul. I'm afraid to give my email on the podcast. <laughs> no, it's cool. Support's a good place. All right. Anyway, we'll get guys, it taken care of. We will. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. As always, my name is Paul. I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone You.